as we go through the course of our top 12, what's number one for you? Um, Michigan somehow, some way, pulling something out of the ether <laughs> to drive down the field on a, a short down, long run, and set up a game-winning, of what would become a game-winning, USC would get the ball back late, touchdown in the big house against what I think we still believe to some extent is a resurgent USC, uh, the way that game unfolded and the different narrative branches coming out of that as well, be it Michigan's offense, USC's defense, USC's play calling, USC late game decision, uh, making Michigan's running backs leading this team, Michigan's pass rushers leading this team, Michigan's cornerbacks leading this team in certain moments. Um, there are a lot of different narrative directions to go in. So that's that's the one I went with. But I, I certainly think that Tennessee, Oklahoma is right there as well. Yeah, the headline for the Michigan game that I jotted down in our shared doc here was that Michigan survived its own orgy. Oh, no. I mean, they kind of did, right? They kind of did. They won. Yeah. 27-24. And as you have said time and again on this show, winning is a skill. It is. So regardless of what you think about Michigan's offense or how they got here, winning is a skill. And the fact that they were able to drive the field in the manner that they did late not really having a passing game. Alex Orgy had, what, 32 passing yards? Something like that in this game. It wasn't a lot. Nope. Nearly went full service academy with this thing. The fact that they drove the field late, got the go-ahead touchdown, and did so in the manner that they played offense, I thought, on some level, that is damn impressive. Not necessarily how I'd like my team to play offense the full year through. I'm sure there are many Michigan fans who feel the same, but it worked. They ended up winning this game. It was one of those deals where you and I were typing back and forth to each other, and we we felt there was zero chance at that juncture that Michigan had any opportunity to drive the field with, with what we assumed they had in the passing game. And so the fact that they were able to do that, win it late, I think is obviously a pretty strong testament to their character. Mm -hmm. And on some level speaks pretty well of Sharon Moore's leadership and the leadership of the veterans on that team. Cause there still are a fair amount of veterans on that team. Put yourself in position to let your opponent gack the game away. Put yourself. That's what, a, when you say winning is a skill, when we say winning is a skill, it's draft off of the opportunity truck. It's go a second half without a first down until quite late in, in the, the game. And when you do get that first round, run through a USC defense that looks like the old USC defense. And weirdly enough, those were UCLA transfers in the back end, missing that tackle yeah. or those tackles, whatever. Um, yeah, USC put themselves in position to win that game in a new way for them, which is defense, some timely passing, really heads up running, um, and lost the game in an old way. And so what Michigan was able to do was lean on what they were positive they could eventually do well, right? That they could run straight into the wall 15 times, and on number 16, they could get a crack through that wall and bust something big. I don't know how many of uh, Kalel Mullings' runs were particularly long, but when they were, they were very long. There were, you know, three or four just gigantic runs that helped to open up this game. Will Johnson obviously had his pick six. Like, everybody that watched this game knew how it unfolded. I, I can't believe Michigan has arrived at this place where they don't have a passing offense. And then one step above that, I can't believe Michigan has arrived at this place where they don't have a passing offense and USC can't take advantage when they themselves seem to have a much improved defense. This was a wild game. And the takeaway for me is, man, I don't know how much longer this can work for Michigan, but I guess in this conference at the moment... Maybe for a little while. I think they're going to have some trouble with uh, Ohio State and Oregon. But I don't know. Maybe they can keep it going. They can ugly it up. We've seen teams in this conference ugly it up on their way to a, lot, a number of wins. Um, and then I guess on the other side, the, the sort of big picture takeaway with USC is like, when is this going to stop? <laughs> when is this type of losing going to stop for the Trojans? Dan, truly, there were there were big swaths of this game where I watched that USC defense and I said, it feels like they're better. Yeah. The tackling's definitely better on the edge uh, in space. Yeah. Tackling's definitely better. They're more physical. It seems like they're more organized. They're in the right spots. Whereas last year they were kind of running every which way. So it, it seems like at least something, 
is taking. It is the problem, though, when you play against an offense like this. And despite what we said about Michigan and its offensive line, and it's still trying to gel and find its way, and it's not the same, it's not as good as it was last year. Now, all that stuff can be true. But when you play an offense like this, in particular, an offense that is used to playing like this and will eventually find its way, I think we're confident in that. Yeah. They wear you down. They wear you down over the course of time. And USC was starting from a place where we questioned their physicality all throughout last year, really all throughout the Lincoln Riley era. Coming into the season with Dan Lynn, they were trying to improve that. They were trying to get better up front. And I do think they got there. But ultimately, to your point, yeah, they lost in the old way because Michigan ran this offense. They wore them down. In, in doing so, they kind of proved to the world that they've got two marquee runners in the backfield. Donovan Edwards is on the cover of the damn video game. He might not be the best running back on the Mullings team. I think is better. He runs tougher. Yeah. Yeah, so there, there's a lot to like here on the Michigan side. It is just a question of how long can they continue winning in this in this particular way. Um, if you're a Michigan fan, so what? Right. So what? You're you're undefeated. Oh, you I don't beat... think they want to watch this every week. <laughs> I don't think they do either, but you'll take the win however you can get it. Of course. Yeah. I you know, uh, one part of me said like watching this Michigan offense in a winning effort, of course, that you couldn't take the six days and figure out how to use Alex Orgy in a novel, unique way that takes advantage of what he can do. And then when you'd see him roll out and try to hit one read or go passes, he would miss. He would just miss. And so, like, behind closed doors in Ann Arbor, I'm sure there's a lot of, like, what do you want us to do? What yeah. do you want us to do here? And, like, we can't have Davis Warren throwing three picks against Arkansas State. We can't trust that heading into the Big Ten season. And we know that Alex Orgy is not going to throw the ball a ton, so maybe we won't turn the ball over. But, like, what do you want us to do? We're yeah. not completing passes. I don't think they had a, a pass completed to double-digit yardage <laughs> until the very end of the game. Like, I think the, there was a long, I think it was the backup tight end, Klein, I want to say his name is. Um, it, was, it was a nine-yard pass, was the the longest yeah. reception Michigan had for a chunk of the game. Whereas USC, they had the the heads-up plays. They had the big plays downfield. I thought Miller Moss showed a good amount of composure uh, at times. You know, the final drive wasn't great. Um, the play calling near the end of the game wasn't great with those screens and shovel passes. Hated that sequence, Ty. Really, truly did for, for <laughs> USC people. Yeah. Um, USC, by the way, was on the verge of winning this game in a game in which they benched their starting left tackle because he was getting torched too often by Josiah Stewart. Yeah. Like there was just there, there the micro stories involved in this game were crazy fascinating. And these are two teams that are not going to compete for anything significant by the end of the season, likely, but none the same. I'm fascinated by it. All the same. Uh, a, a really nice win for Michigan. How, however, you got to do it. Yeah. They did it.